and welcome to another episode of Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello, hello. So, what, do we, what, what have you been doing the last two weeks, John? I bought a condo this morning. Serious? Where at? <laughs> That's kind of a random... <laughs> <laughs> In Peoria. Wow. We'll talk. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, Sorry. No, that's uh, that's All great. Right. Not so, what I was expecting, but. So more on target. Let me just go ahead and say, uh, for those of you guys who have never said it online, I guess uh, I do invest in real estate. So, anywho, uh, I got a calcium uh, calcium index score test ran just a couple of days ago, so I don't have results. Yet, but I just did that. That's real. That's relative. It it is real, well. Real, everything real is relative, right? But yeah, it's, but real estate has nothing to do with no, <laughs> no, and it's totally fine. It just threw me. I was like not <laughs> expecting that to be an answer. Yeah, well. um, so what is, what is the calcium? Can you give us a little bit of it? Okay. So I'll I'll give you both both sides of that. So backstory for me. Um, I don't know if I've mentioned this. So I'll go ahead and hopefully you won't. This is boring. You listen, but. My, both my grandfathers have had heart, uh, heart disease type stuff, triple bypass, or quadruple, those type of things. And my dad recently, uh, I, mean, I guess I just outed my dad saying he had a, he had some, some stuff going on recently too. And, this, and those kind of things uh, sometimes are scary enough to make you think about it, what's going on. So uh, I've mentioned before, I've had my DNA ran before, so I already know I'm higher risk for a fibrillation, whatever that word the is. The AFib. The AFib. Yep. Oh, AFib, yeah, AFib. See, that's why they say AFib in yeah. the actual <laughs> word. Uh, and, you know, it's hypertension, increased risk, those type of things. So I already know that my dad just, you know, he passed his genes, so if he was here, I would turn to him and say, Thanks, Dad. Thanks, Dad. So the CI, so to to your question, now that I give you a backstory, um, is a it's a computer generated number that is based on how much calcium is built up in in your chest already. So a lot of times, when you think about they put in a, a stent or they do a bypass, what they're bypassing or what they are reinforcing is it's basically to alleviate the blockage, which is from calcification. So what this test does is it looks at all of your bloodstreams and then and it does a it's not it's a computer um, algorithm that generates you a number. So the reason that I got it done now is because I want to start proactively doing that to see if my score is improving or decreasing. Obviously, it takes a long time for that number to, to make major changes, but uh, it's one of the reasons why I mean, keto, keto doesn't usually tend to lend itself to calcium uh, buildup. Uh, but, but this test is a better indicator of heart problems. Well, I mean, it's controversial. Uh, okay. Insurances won't cover it because it doesn't have the right backing. There's a movie, sorry, documentary that talks about it called The Widowmaker. And if you're interested, I can't link to that movie. But I can, I can send, uh, there, there's, a, there's a TED Talk where they talk about it, too. Okay. So anyway, it's proactive. Uh, you know, the thing with heart stuff is you hear a lot more of people who are healthy having heart issues. And it's just like one of those things that I'd rather spend a hundred bucks now and a hundred bucks every year just to kind of see how I'm trending. So that is why I'm doing it. How about you? Well, my husband doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to check into you having him do that same test as well. <laughs> he doesn't well. know it yet. Yeah, he doesn't know it yet. And, yeah. there, there might be some trickery involved to get him to agree to it, but that's that's going to be my well, goal. I've never had it. Uh, uh, whatever, it's like what we call CT. CT? Uh, I've never had a CT before, right? So it was just a complete new experience for me. And uh, I can take my picture of me getting the test done. But you, 
I showed the picture to you to just be good. Uh, I showed the picture. She's like, oh, wow, you had an open air one. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know there was a difference between open air versus not. Yeah. So, but. so I have, um, I haven't done a lot this week, but, or the past two weeks, but we did talk um, a little bit, I think it was last, maybe the last two shows, um, that I was in... Testing your sensitive bi- gut, gut biome. Correct. Yep. And so sensitivity. Right. Okay. So the gut biome is um, part of a research group, and I think that there were five uh, studies. So I got results for the first three, um, and... They were, there were some things that were bad. Um, the second test, one or two improved, and then by the third test, they all went back to being out of whack plus a few extras. Um, so with is the it, fourth... Is, it, is there a slider that goes from normal to out of whack? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, they should. They, yeah, people they should. Are, they people should. would read their results better. <laughs> Um, so the the fourth one, uh, I had not changed any of my eating habits, but by the fifth one, I had introduced uh, some sauerkraut. So I just sent off the fifth sample, I think a week or so ago. They they sent the email that they've received it. So I'm kind of anxious to see, and not to be gross, but um, I have noticed some differences in the consistency. So. I think the sauerkraut. You started having fermented food. Correct. Yeah. So there's definitely been a visual change and a consistency change in my poop. <laughs> but um, we'll see what the test comes back and see if that actually did anything or if it was just a coincidence that that change happened. But I'm kind of anxious to see that. And I am making my own sauerkraut. I'm going to see how that fares. I got a. I got a recipe Talk from three, no, three sixty would be <laughs> all the way around. Talk yeah. about one eighty. I know because I would not even eat it, but yeah. So I have that fermenting on the on the counter right now. So it's been I put it in on Saturday. So we'll see if that turns out. Hopefully, it's not going to kill me. I'm I'm praying that it doesn't grow mold or something. Good, I've read that. Good bacteria. That's right. Yeah, Fair I'm hoping point. it's a good back bacteria. Um. And then on Sunday, I sent off a food sensitivity test. So um, we had had uh, a guest on before, and Tracy had talked about uh, food sensitivity and some different things that she has done, and Jimmy Moore has also done this test. Um, Tracy's came back that she was sensitive to beef and had to give it up for six months and what have you. Uh, Jimmy, I do believe, came back that he was sensitive to eggs, and unfortunately, he's got a yard full of chickens that <laughs> he was not able to eat their uh, what they were producing. So I did send it off on Sunday. Hopefully, I'll have that uh, result back soon. So I'm kind of anxious to see what sensitivity it is. I went 28 days dairy-free with no uh, visible or no measurable change, change for me. So back to cream, I, I have not I've not gone back to cream, but I am doing um, oh, cheese. Yeah. cheese. So yeah, I had I had started putting the coconut cream in my coffee and I actually like that. With it. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, I'm I'm gonna stick with the coconut cream, but I did well, because quite honestly, the um the heavy whipping cream always gave me kind of a stomach issue anyway. So before keto, I never ate it, so I didn't really notice it. And if I cook with it, I still don't notice it. But when I would put it in my coffee, it would give me some intestinal distress. Hmm. Uh, so I'm sure that there's something in it that didn't agree with me, but I don't have that issue with the coconut cream, so I'll stick with that. But anyway, that's that's where I'm at. So. Well. You just completely lose 10 minutes just talking about us. <laughs> well, I'm hoping to have those results uh, by our next show. Hopefully all three of those results we can kind of share with everybody and, oh, yeah. you know, kind of if they're interested in those type of tests, I'll have the links for the food sensitivity. And I'll also link out to the uh, the Ubiome 
if anyone is interested in participating in that research, they do reach out to your insurance company. If your insurance company doesn't pay 100% of it, they pick up uh, the bill as long as it's part of this research. So if anybody's interested, I'll put that in the show notes as well. So. Yeah. Go wrong there. Yeah. All right. So picking up where we left off with some of the questions, uh, we've answered most of these directly to the people who asked them, but it's always good to kind of follow up and do question and answer time again. So uh, I think we've talked about this before, but just to kind of follow up, uh, the question we get asked quite often is, if I am not hungry, do I need to eat? So... Yeah, and for me, well, for me, this one isn't kind of, I mean, it's like, you would think it'd be clear cut, right? It's not. It's not really clear cut. So if you're hungry, should you eat? The answer is absolutely yes. If you're not hungry, it's not quite that clear. So not hungry, I think, I think there's a couple of things that we want to be cognizant of. So unless you have been doing, um, Unless you have cut the fad diet out and you have done that for an extended period of time, I would say you probably don't really know uh, your body's signals. So, again, it's not really easy to say yes or no. But what I would say is if you are not hungry, extend the length of time between your meals and only eat when you truly are hungry. So if you have gone, I don't know, let's say 13 hours since your last meal, but you're really not that hungry, then don't eat. Wait until you are extremely hungry and that you can eat enough food that not only are you going to be satisfied, but you're also going to be able to um, have enough calories to sustain until your next meal. So what I mean by that is if you are eating... If you go the 12 hours without food and then you eat, but you're only able to eat a small amount of food before now you're you're full, it's not really benefiting you to eat that small amount of food. You probably want to wait until you can eat an actual large meal and get some calories and get some fat in there uh, that's going to help benefit uh, your overall health. Yeah. Um, There are times... So I agree, but I mean, there are times where I make myself eat when I'm not hungry, just because sometimes, especially if I was active that day, I know, I just know I haven't got a lot of food in me. Sometimes I will literally just... Yeah, and the, and there are exceptions, right? So there's always exceptions to things. So that's which is why I wanted to bring it up. But yeah. And that's a personal yep. thing, right? And uh, when it comes down to it, that would be like you are below your resting metabolic rate. Yeah, but that's that's an exception for you, right? It's yeah. not the norm. It's not every day that you're forcing yourself to eat a meal. It's either because you have to fit it into your schedule or um so I would I would definitely agree that as a um as an occasion, yes, it's not going to be detrimental to force a meal. But I would definitely say that that's not what you would want to do as a normal practice. Yeah. So, um, one of the other questions, and this kind of falls in line with that, uh, people ask: Is fasting a must? What's your take on that? Yes, you should do it every month, right on the third. <laughs> uh, I mean, I've only fasted for an extended period of time. One time, uh, I went. Years, years, not doing any intermittent fasting or anything other than obviously not eating overnight. Yeah. Um, it wasn't until probably in the last year where I started to be comfortable with not eating in the morning. So, no. <laughs> not much. <laughs> and, yeah. I mean... There's a lot of people that it's trendy right now to fast. Yeah. So they're like, well, I got, you know, it's part of the poor protocol. I think, well, just because a lot of people talk about it. I mean, it's really part of the protocol. I think the jury's still out on, I mean, there's, there's benefits to it. Don't get me wrong. You know, but those benefits vary. And say fast, what kind of fat? Which would do fat fast? And I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't think that counts. Yeah. 
you're, you're eating calories, so you're not fast. Yeah. You might be keeping your body in fat burning mode, but you're not. Yeah, see, I'm kind of like that. And to me, those are those trendy, clicky kind of things that I have the diet mentality. Like, that's what I view those things as. Um, so I'm, I'm not on board with those, to be quite honest. And I'm not saying that if you do them that it's a bad thing. But for me personally, I have to get away from that diet mentality in order to be successful doing what I do. So doing those fat fast or the egg fast or the hamburger and butter fast or whatever the, you know, the groups are calling all of this, like to me, just eat. Um, and, and for me, quite honestly, fasting, I don't think there is any, um, any bad thing with doing intermittent fasting and doing it regularly. And quite honestly, once you change your eating habits, that kind of come natural anyway. You're just bitter because you didn't make your body I, fast. <laughs> I know, I know, right? No, and to be I'm, quite honest, just, um, I, as bad as it made me feel, I, I am a little gun shy to do it again. Um, now, you know, everybody, I've told everybody my husband did it uh, for much longer than I did. Yeah, he yeah. liked it. Um, and he's actually talked about it, doing it again. So, I wouldn't say I liked it, but I definitely am considering doing it again just from the, what's that word, autophagy. Auto, 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 mm-hmm. um, I, I look forward to the research revolving around that. Yeah. And again, I'm not opposed to it, but personally, um, it, it, I'm a little gun shy with it just because yeah, I didn't have a great experience with it, right? So not that I will never do it again. Uh, I just don't have one planned yet. <laughs> so. so supplementation of potassium and magnesium. So where we are in Illinois, a lot of our farmland and stuff is low in a lot of those nutrients because we are a big, what do you call this, farm? We're the farm belt. Mega yeah. farms, farm belt, whatever you want to call it. So should I supplement? Um, so I would say potassium. I do not believe taking a pill uh, is a good thing. There, I mean, there, there's a place for it. But I think for people who are just going to your local store getting potassium and doing it because Johnny on the Internet told you to is not a good thing. Um, you can get enough potassium from your food. So, you know, and, and I think researching what those foods are is probably going to be very beneficial. Growing up, I thought bananas were the only way I was going to ever get potassium. And to my surprise... Bananas don't have near as much potassium in it as avocados do. So, I, in fact, I just yeah, I just heard a um, I just was listening to a, a doctor talk, and it would take 15 bananas to equal the quantity of potassium that you need per day, but it would only take five avocados. So again, nobody's going to eat five avocados a day, but it kind of puts things into perspective that a banana doesn't have near as much potassium as you think that it does, and there are plenty of other foods that do have potassium. Now, magnesium, in my opinion, and I'm not a doctor, but in my opinion, I think every person in the United States should take magnesium supplements, Um, whether you eat healthy foods, whether you eat a fad diet or whether you don't, because from the research that I have come up with and the doctors that I have listened to, the food that we grow in the United States does not have enough minerals and magnesium in the food. So I think most people are magnesium deficient. And unfortunately, magnesium is not one that the doctors ever test for. Have you ever checked? I have. Yeah, I actually have like requested. I'm sorry. There's a test for that. There is a test. Yeah, and and quite honestly, they test for all electrolytes except magnesium. And it's a known fact that magnesium is a def- most people in the United States are deficient. So I don't know why our doctors don't um, automatically test for that, but they don't. So I did have mine. The last two blood tests I've had, I have had the magnesium tested, um, and I do take supplements, and mine was in the normal range. So I don't know what it was pre-keto and before I, you know, started researching and and decided to start taking magnesium. But, yeah, I, I, from the research that I've done, magnesium, I think, is a good thing. 
Well, I don't. You don't, okay. <laughs> but maybe I should. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I've I've never. I. Just don't supplement. Maybe I should. Yeah. Have you ever had yours tested? No. Nope. I've never really had anything tested that wasn't the default panel that we get. Oh yeah. Part of our employment. Yeah, and again, I did it just because um, I have an aunt who is a nurse, and she does not like the way that I eat, and she's very concerned that I am killing myself. So one, uh, two of the things that she constantly asked me about was magnesium and potassium. Potassium, I always could tell her because, again, that's part of the normal panel that they do. Uh, but with magnesium, that was one thing that I couldn't, so I did start having that tested. Does she test hers? She does not, but she doesn't supplement, and she thinks that that's the healthier way to go. No testing, no supplementing. But because I was supplementing, she felt that I was... Oh, she was concerned about you overdoing. Correct. Not underdoing. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, which, to be honest, good, good potassium, thing. either way, over or under, is not a good thing. And the same with magnesium. Magnesium deficiency actually is um, linked to many of today's ailments. So. Is it possible that I get it in my like salt? Uh, you yes. There, there is some magnesium, like in, in uh, the pink Himalayan, there, there is some, but I don't think the quantity, yeah, I don't think the quantity is there. All right. So, I can barely pronounce this, but is keto safe for people who have vertical sleeve gastri- gris- gastrectomy? Gastrectomy? Um, First off, I don't even know what that is. Yeah, so this, this is actually a weight loss, um, a weight loss surgery. So there's, there's a few weight loss surgeries. You have uh, a duodenal switch. You have a, um, the gastric sleeve gastrectomy or the VSG. You also have a, um, uh, it is the gastric bypass, which is probably the most commonly known. Um, it's been out there for a long time. A lot of people have had that one. And then they also have a lap band. So this, this question was specific to the vertical sleeve, but I kind of wanted to expand on all of them. So a vertical sleeve is a, an alteration of the actual stomach size, but it does not impact the intestines or reroute anything in your intestines. So for that, the only difference between um, somebody who's had that surgery and somebody who has not is that their stomach is smaller and so they cannot consume as many or the quantity of food at the same rate that somebody who has not had it. So that wouldn't matter, it's just a smaller stomach to get full of extra. Correct. That is correct. So the absorption of vitamins and minerals is no different. Um, the absorption of your uh, micro and macronutrients is no different. So does, is keto safe for people who have that? And the answer is yes. Well, no different. Yeah, it, truly. There, there is no difference. Now, there is a difference in the way you're going to have to do the plan. So some of the advice that we give to people has to be altered because you cannot have the same amount of food. So um, I don't know how long the uh, restriction on quantity is for this specific, but the extended fasting or the, um, not the extended, but the... the well, um, well, you wouldn't want to intermittent fast if you have that correct. meal. Right. So intermittent food fasting food. would not be something recommended for somebody who had any of these type of surgeries, to be quite honest. Um, and because they can only eat about between a quarter and a half a cup of food at a time, um, you have to get creative with the way they eat. So... Um, Yes, my, I mean, my answer is yes, they can, it is safe for them, but you, you do have to be creative. So if you're somebody who's had this surgery and you're interested in it, um, you either want to seek out somebody who is knowledgeable in this um, and can help you through that, or you really are going to have to research much more than, than the average Joe. So. The person who we both know, he didn't end up going to you, did he? Um, so, okay, so I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay, so anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. sorry, I didn't want to get personal information out of Ray, especially if we don't have all the facts. So, But yeah, the point is, is, just from the research you've done, I, mean, I yeah. have no experience. Yeah, it it is doable, and again, it's different with each of them, right? So lap band oh, okay. and um, the vertical sleeve are going to be less changes or less modifications to make it work. Uh, your your duodenal switch or your DS, along with your um, gastric bypass, you're going to have to get a little bit more creative because then you're introducing the malabsorption into the restriction in the stomach as well. So, again, it's, it is doable, but... So if you like had a sister that was coming to you and was considering that, you would convince her to try to try keto first? Not 100% yes. 100% yes. If you, are, if you are on the fence about it and you are looking at keto and a surgery, my advice to you would be give keto a minimum of 60 days and see what happens, because this you can change. A surgery, yeah. you cannot undo that. So I'll be off my sofa. <laughs> okay. So next question is actually on fitness. So we're gonna we're gonna ask Ooh, on something fitness. Something I can experts. talk about. Um, so the question came to me: How do I get started with HIT? First, can you explain what HIT is, and then just because maybe not everybody knows what HIT is. Really well, I think we have a little bit. Yeah, I think we have, uh, but I don't know how much we have. So just really fast, uh, HIT is high intensity for a certain, usually smaller period of time. So uh, a HIT workout would be going all out and taking a break, and then going all out and taking a break. And it, it, it's more about the max effort. Uh, but, for example, if you were going to compare it, you would never do HIT running. It would be sprints uh, to give you kind of a just kind of an easy way to think about it. So when you say that, um, someone had recommended to me one time on the treadmill to run as fast as I could for yeah. like 90 seconds and then just do a moderate um, moderate walk for a minute. Is that what you're talking about? That, is that changing? Be, yeah. Okay. Um, personally, I could never do it on a treadmill because. There's no easy way on a treadmill to go quote unquote all out because it's way too difficult. I would much rather see somebody try it on a bike where they're somewhat stationary and they're just pedaling faster. Okay. Uh, you know, the, uh, or my personal favorite is a rowing machine, but nobody likes to row. I think I'm. <laughs> um, I do, but I do not have one at home. Well, rowing is. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. And, and actually, rowing is actually way more complex than it really is. I mean... The, than it appears, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's way more about uh, getting your legs in there. See, look, wow, I'm like, I'm way, taking us way off track. So, getting started with HIT, we, we did uh, put together like a little teeny um, class on this, an online course who was part of when we were trying to to roll those courses out. So I can link to a uh, direct link to that course in the show notes. But uh, burpees, high knee runs, all those things, you can just get a timer. Uh, there's apps that do it. Uh, the key is to think about it has nothing to do with how fast. It has to do with your, your um, intensity. So what's that mean? Like a, a, a uh, sprint for you would be way slower than a sprint for me. Yep. So don't think about, oh, I've got, you know, if you see uh, some online program and it says you have to do, you know, 20 burpees and you can't even do a burpee, well, obviously that's not the program for you, right? I mean, you can do hit with any move at all. Don't hit, hit. Just, just think about getting your heart rate up. Okay. And there are some, if, if anyone is interested, there actually are some pretty good ones um, out on the Internet. Okay. I actually purchased a PDF for like $5 from some lady, and it, I think it was like a 20-week program. Somebody posted and, in the forum and had a free app that had different ones. Okay, too. yeah. But, yeah, there's, I mean, there's a lot of them, and I actually enjoyed it. I had uh, my best friend and my sister used to come over three times a week, and 
there were, I think there were five different uh, programs as part of this, and we would each do something different. And the, the premise of it is that you did all of these things and you did as many of each of them as you could in a set amount of time, and each one of us were different, right? So they gave you a goal to try to hit. So one of them was jumping rope which I have to say sounds easy, but after 20 years of not jumping rope, that's hard. And so, like, the goal was to hit 25, and all three of us are thinking, oh, come on, 25 on the jump rope, that's easy as can be. No, it wasn't, and it really got your heart rate up, but that was kind of the idea. In five minutes for you, whatever number you could hit with your goal trying to be 25, um, and then you just, like, hurried up and went to the next section. So my basement was set up with all these different workstations, and each each one of us would start at a different place, and, and we would do that. So My favorite? Ropes. The battle ropes. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, my, my friend uh, moved, and he uh, I, I snagged him off in the bargain basement prices, and I threw it in my basement, and oh, man, doing, doing the battle ropes is just... Oh, that's a good... I, know, I haven't hard. thought of that. Maybe I'll try to talk Brian into getting some of yeah, those. I, well, um, <laughs> I picked up... Because uh, they're just barge it, ropes, right? Huh? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Barger. The um the uh, boxers they have they have for boxers they've got these little teeny they they look like pagers but they're actually you can set they're cheap on Amazon and mm-hmm. then you can set like two minutes or one minute and they vibrate you can stick it in your in your pant line and then you go you don't even have to yeah I mean because obviously when you're doing that you can't look right. at the time very right. easily and then it buzzes. Uh, and then you know you stop, and it'll buzz again to go. Nice. Uh, I've got the same thing on my uh, watch. Nice. So anyway. Yeah, I'll also check into that. But, yeah, there are plenty of things on the Internet, and we can link to, like John said, we'll link to the hit course that yeah. he put together. i take notes on that. I am taking notes. I got you, you covered, buddy. Thank you. You're um, fantastic. And then um, I'll try to find the PDF that I purchased, like I said, I, actually it might have been three dollars. It was really cheap and they just emailed the PDF to you. So well, in- but it was everything that you could do at home. It was no gym required. Um so and again it was like burpees and, you know, different different things that didn't even require weights. So but yeah. I'll I'll try to find that too. Yeah. YouTube or Instagram. Yeah. Or yeah. And, yeah, absolutely. Rotate room. Uh the next question that was sent to us uh, what do you wish that you knew when you were first starting out? Ooh. Do I go first or you? You. Me? Yeah, you know. Um, I wish I would have realized if I had one... Okay, let me think about this. I wish I would have put realized earlier on that large amounts of carbs were deadening my ability to listen to my body. Mm, that's a good one. Because I've learned a lot more about tweaking things and what works for me and what doesn't once I started decreasing the amount of carbs that I had. I think early on when I was playing with protein and doing all these things and I was a more of a quote-unquote gym rat, I think I... I was maybe moving the needle like a little and a little and a little and a little and and just being able to remove carbs made me, I think, a lot more self-aware. Yeah, this is so if I only had one. one thing, that's what it would be. And again, it's different for everybody, but for me, I'm, I am more more sensitive to carbs, so, maybe, uh, so that impacted me more. Yeah. This one is a hard one for me. Um, and I don't know if it's because I've been doing it so long that I forgot um, or it's because I have that personality that I'm an all or nothing kind of person. Well, what about um, the biggest rock? What's the biggest? So, you know, when we had uh, Tom on, he, his, his big three were getting rid of the seed oils, mm-hmm. um, getting rid of, like, so he, he, did he say seed oils was his biggest one? Yeah. Getting rid of the junk oil. Yeah. I think for me, quite honestly, it would probably be just keeping it simple. So I think a lot of people... Make it really complex. Yeah, try to go into it with replacing X, Y, and Z with something new and knowing that it's okay to say no to cake. 
it's okay to never eat bread again. Um, like, those are the kinds of things that going into it, maybe, um, I wish I would have realized earlier. Uh, so, I mean, we've talked about this a thousand times. I am not a sweet eater, but my husband was. So I was constantly making it and trying to duplicate or recreate that favorite thing. Um, and first of all, you're not going to. Um, it's different. <laughs> Your the sweetener is not going to ever taste like sugar, no matter who tells you that it does. It doesn't. Now your taste will change as time goes on, and you're not going to remember what that sugar really tasted like. So to you, it probably does taste sweet enough. But if you get somebody who doesn't, who has never come off of sugar, they're still not going to think it tastes the same. So I think for me, probably that is that's it. Just Keep it simple, knowing that you don't have to try to recreate things. Um, I don't think we have time to do that last question because I think it's going to be more, uh, the, sorry, the next one. So can I tweak this one on you really fast? Sure. If you could automatically make your body have picked up something or, or, or done a change, what, what, would you, what would you do? Like, like uh, so for me... I think uh, it took me a long time to kick sugar. So if I got to wave a magic wand for my body to convert, uh, I would love to just be fat adapted right away. Oop, oop. Fat adapted. <laughs> what so, would yours be? So it, uh, do you mean like what food did I struggle with getting rid of? or? Okay, yeah, sure. If it's a, if it's a food that was your Achilles heel, what was your Achilles heel if you had to you just make do a magic wand, would you? Yeah, so again, this one for me is a little bit hard because I do have the personality I'm an all or nothing. Yeah, so it's, it, that one I don't think applies to me as much. But I do, I do have things that I could get in trouble with. So crackers definitely are something that um, I don't make. Oh, yeah. Because I know this about me. You're cheesy biscuits, man. I could, I could just eat the entire, like, yeah. the entire thing. Yeah. And although I'm not a huge bread kind of fan, no. Whoa. How they are not in our two-week cookbook. Because they were going into our actual cookbook, and oh, yeah. we, we, haven't, we, we haven't done that yet. We're not even close. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, breads were, although I do love breads, I can make bread and not... Worry. I mean, I can have it in the refrigerator and, and not eat it every single day. Um, and, and that's the same thing with, with sweets. But for me, it's really those cracker. It's the crunchy, salty, um, which those cheese wisps kind of fall into the, for me. The cheese wisps, I can see how those would be dangerous. Yeah. So, that, But truly, those are the things for me. Um, luckily, I was able to identify that early. Because, again, I am an all or nothing. So you can so, buy, like, an entire case of cheese crisps? <laughs> no. No, I can't buy them. And that's why they are not in my house anymore. And, well, honestly, so when I went dairy-free, I have some at the house. So I do have a package that I haven't touched for 30 days, um, which are probably stale by now, to oh, be honest. that's just blasphemy. Yeah, I know. You're I know. It's terrible. Stale. Well, and my that's husband good. doesn't like them, so oh. he doesn't. No one in my family likes them but me. Because they're too rich for him. And unfortunately, the very first day that I tried them, I thought, I thought that as well. I'm like, oh, my gosh, a few is enough until I ate them the second time. And then a few wasn't enough. And then that amount wasn't enough. And so, yeah, those are, oh, those man, are dangerous for me. they're salty. I don't know. I, yeah. Oh, man. I, I, I yeah, Brian them. does too. Brian thinks they're too salty. I will salty pour those in the hole of the avocado. Yeah. So, yeah, for me, I mean, it, it's, it's going to be the salty, crunchy that I, I find dangerous. And I know our two each of these deals, or whatever the heck it's called. Yeah, so we did not get through all of our questions again this this month, which is fine. Um, Sorry if you submitted them and we didn't answer them. So we've gotten back to most people. Yeah. 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 But they'll they'll just carry over to next month, and those will be the first ones that we start with. Yeah. We'll start with those next month. All right, and then maybe you'll bring fermented food, and then like I may. peanut butter and egg So thing. do you That's not like, oh, yeah, I don't, no, I'm not doing that ever again. That's, that was disgusting. 
Um, it wasn't disgusting. But... It was kind of disgusting for me. Okay. I would not. I would not do that twice. Don't worry. If we ever do a video like that again, I'll make sure you turn the phone. Yeah. Um, so with fermented food, do you not like sauerkraut at all? Is that I, something that you've tried and you don't like it? Or? I do not have a taste for it. Okay. If I was going to have something fermented, I would much rather drink a kombucha or kombu, whatever it's called. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to look into that because I have not ever tried kombucha. How about this? Uh, I pick up six packs at Costco. Uh, oh, really? Are you okay with the ginger flavor? Yes, I, yes, I love ginger. And that's I put ginger in my uh, sauerkraut oh. when I made it. Is yeah. that common? Uh, no. Not really. I, I found the fact that we just yeah. talk openly. <laughs> like, well, right. We it. might as well. <laughs> um, yeah, so I found a couple of recipes with it in it, but I used red cabbage, which is also not as common, and then I used uh, ginger. So I, I honestly, I took two different recipes and kind of combined them. You don't follow directions. I don't. Recipe I ever. don't. I've never. Well, because. The recipe Elena gave me had jalapenos in it, and I don't care that much for jalapenos. Um, so hers was the base was red cabbage and some other stuff, but it didn't have ginger. And with me eating it all those days in a row, I found that I actually liked ginger in it. So I melted ginger and butter, and that's what I put over uh, the sauerkraut. So that's why I thought of putting it in. And I did find a recipe that that is something that people do. So I just took what I liked out of each of the two and combined them and praying that it comes out. And All right. Well, I'll, I'll try it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll bring some in and you can try it. All right. We need to have a kombucha and sour, homemade sauerkraut uh, sampling. Yeah. And then I also, I also want to see if I can't find some kimchi. I've heard that that's really good too, but I don't actually. I actually don't even know what kimchi is made of. Okay. I just know it's a fermented food, but I, I don't know. The yolk. Oh no, that's kefir. Yeah, kefir as well is supposed to be good, but I have not tried that either. All right. Do you think we're ever going to actually end up? Time? No. <laughs> okay. Well, at least we're honest with each other. <laughs> it's hard. Oh well. And on that note. All right. So we will get all of this stuff in our show notes. Uh, make sure you guys go out and rate us on the Apple, iTunes, whatever it's called. Uh, I'm going to have to look that name up. I know. We're going to we're gonna have to look that name up and tell you exactly what it is. I think it's Apple hmm. Review. Why don't I interrupt you? Yeah. I, uh, one of the girls at Culver's, which if you're not from around here, is a basically a Dairy Queen-ish alternative or Steak and Shake, whatever your poison is. Yep. Uh, and uh, she's Full keto, full keto, and uh, I'm going to interview her. So there'll be a side side one pop in there. On yeah. that, I, I, th- I think it's fascinating. I was like am- amazed that she c- could be around ice cream all day, every day. Yeah. So that's gonna See, I could too, though. Maybe you she'd like do? me. I should. I oh, should I have to know, meet man. her. Yeah. Man, squirrel. But so. I think if I was around ice cream all the time, and all the fun flavors they have every day, because they alternate every day, right. I would be like. Yeah. What? <laughs> so go give us a re- review on Apple Review, and then also you can reach us at ketoniancorner.com, ketoniancorner at Gmail. Uh, we're on all the social medias under Ketonian Corner, so hit us up. And um, if you're in our area, which we're Central Illinois, hit me up because we actually started with um, a few other people we started a uh, keto keto meetup group. Yeah, we got on Facebook. We kind of so. got a little bit of a ask if we'd help participate in that. So. Yeah, that could so be interesting. Tom Cease, we in- interviewed last for, year. Oh, he's the one that talked about the, the detailed fasting. For, Correct. For yep. Heart, so heart, we teamed uh, up with him and. I say heart That's not very fair. No. Well, he he does. He had um, AFib. But yeah, definitely so. want to uh, check into if that's something that interests you. Yep. I, I like this interview. So I will. I'll put the the Facebook uh, link to that in the show notes as well. So hit us up. And until next time, thanks, guys. Yeah.